and I'm going to do a screen recording of the um, photosynthesis virtual lab for this week. Uh, originally this lab was due this evening, so you would spend uh, what would have been class time, two hours of class time today, uh, potentially completing this lab on your own time at home or wherever. Um, however, uh, I did not avail a screencast to you, and I'm doing a net meeting today, um, but there aren't um, a lot of attendees at this time, so I'm going to take some time to go ahead and uh, screencast uh, while I walk through the lab. Uh, so this um, activity is really looking at the plant pigments that are involved in photosynthesis. Uh, so we're going to be looking at an example of how... Um, we use chromatography to sort of separate out pigments in just um, pen ink, and then we will proceed on to separating the pigments in um, a leaf. Um, we'll kind of rub some uh, leaf pigments into filter paper um, in much the same way that we're doing the black ink, and um, take a look at the different pigments that separate out. So chromatography is what this process is all about. Chromatography means to chromo. Uh, uh, pigment, chromo meaning, meaning pigments or colors, and tography um, meaning to visualize or separate them out to look at them. So, so this is an example of this uh, chromatography. So we've got filter paper that we put on the end of a pen. Uh, there was some ink that was marked, and then we put it into a solvent. I believe it was just water that was used in this um, experiment. Uh, but you can see that as the water migrated up the filter paper, there was a separation of all these pigments that's in black ink. And then the solvent front is always right up at the top. So this is just pure solvent up here, in this case water. Um, but uh, these are all the pigments that are in that ink then. So the same can be done with chloroplasts, um, or with the ink that's in chloroplasts in plant cells. So we this is how the experiment is set up. We have a... Um, a, a column with a solvent in it. It's not going to be water this time. Um, and the plant uh, leaf is sort of rubbed using a coin. You can take a closer look at this process. You take a coin and kind of um, press that uh, chlorophyll or that gr the green pigments from the leaf into the um, filter paper. And then you fill it with, um, or you put a little solvent at the bottom and cut the filter paper in a way such that the tip of it is touching the solvent and then that solvent will migrate up the, the column. Uh, let's see, we're using for a solvent the ether acetone mixture. Uh, so again, this isn't water. It's going to be different um, than your water. And uh, if we were in the lab, this would be volatile, and we'd have to be very careful not to um, you know, let anything catch fire. Those are very flammable reagents. So uh, this is just a picture that we've already seen. So when you get to this diagram, it'll actually show, I think you have to click on it, it'll show the migration of these pigments up the column um, as the solvent is absorbed by the filter paper. So you can see these various pigments, there's carotene, there's xanthophyll, chlorophyll A and B, and these are all going to sort of separate out. And then in this picture, they just label the pigments, um, and then the solvent front, you'll notice, is always up here at the top. Uh, they just label the pigments, so you don't really even get a measurement um, like in this um, previous uh, picture. You know, we actually have measurements of 3 centimeters here, 10 centimeters for the solvent front. Um, so it's, you know, going to be um, a little trickier as we proceed because there's... Um, there are questions that sort of help you look at what is the um, relative migration, the relationship or the ratio of the migration of the solvent um, uh, compared to the pigments. So we have what we call the RF, the reference front, and we calculate the reference front uh, by taking the um, measurement of the pigment over the uh, distance of the solvent migration. So in this case, if we pan back to the black ink chromatogram, again, we're looking at pigment distance over solvent distance. Uh, you can see that the uh, pigment distance is, uh, it was specified green pigment, is 3 centimeters, and then the solvent distance migration was 10. Um, so if we go back to this, we do 3 over 10 is 0.3. Okay. 
Now in this one, it says look at the chromatogram again um, in the previous exercise and see which one of these is correct or true about our chromatogram. So you have to kind of look through. Now this is, you can attempt multiple times these three questions. Um, the reference front for carotene can be determined by dividing the distance of the carotene migrated um, by the distance of the solvent. So that would be um, pigment over solvent, which I believe is, if we go back, pigment over solvent. So that's probably a true statement, but let's look at the other ones. The reference front um, for the value of chlorophyll B will be higher than that of chlorophyll A. So if you look at the picture, um, let me see if I can bring it up. If you look at this picture, you know, what I would do is just write down the um, order in which these pigments separate out. The carotene is first. That's this orange, uh, like the carotene in carrots. The xanthophyll is going to be this yellow. And then chlorophyll A will be the dark green, and chlorophyll B will be the light green. So I'll go ahead and give that some time to actually show itself again. I would actually draw a diagram of this or make note of it um, if you're taking notes as you go through this lab. Uh, so you know that the solvent front is at the top, carotene, xanthophyll, chlorophyll A, and chlorophyll B. So if we divide these pigment numbers by the um, number for the solvent front, the migration of the solvent front, we've got like a small number over um, the solvent front would be a small number. The higher the um, pigment migration, the larger the number for the reference front. So in the case of the second one, the reference front for B, uh, the R value for uh, chlorophyll B would be higher than chlorophyll A. That would be untrue. The molecules of xanthophyll are not easily dissolved in this solvent and thus are probably larger in mass than chlorophyll B. Um, this takes a little bit of critical thinking. So as you look at how uh, molecules are able to migrate up that um, filter paper, uh, it's safe to say that the smaller molecules are going to migrate up further. So the molecules of xanthophyll are not easily dissolved in the solvent and thus are probably larger in mass than chlorophyll B is probably not a true statement. The chlorophyll B is probably uh, larger than the xanthophyll. Uh, the larger molecules would not mark, migrate as far. Um, that, that's just kind of a, a general generalization you can make about chromatography. And then finally, in this D, if this chromatogram were set up and, and run for twice as long, the RF values would be twice as great for each pigment. Um, the RF values should be relatively the same, so um, regardless of how long you let it run. And I think that was even mentioned in um, one of the earlier slides. So I'm going to go with A. We know that that for sure is true. Now, if a different solvent were used for the chlorophyll chromatography described earlier, so we're using different solvent, what's going to happen? And I think the best thing to do would be to go back up to the front. In the following activity, you will separate pigments using an organic solvent, such as ether acetone. Um, be sure to keep the bottle safe. Um, I wonder if there are any tips in this. Um, just looking to see if there's any tips on what solvents are being used. The molecules migrate or move up the filter paper at different rates because the differences in solubility, molecular mass, and hydrogen bonding with the paper. For a simple, beautiful example, they're using the ink. Um, I'm not sure that it actually addresses this. So let's go back to the lab quiz. You know, this is the best one for number one, so let's look at this. The options are the distances traveled by each pigment will be different, but the RF values will stay the same. Uh, the relative position of the bands will be different. The results with it will be the same if the time is held constant or the R values of some pigments might exceed 1.0. So this bottom one, R values um, exceeding 1.0 would mean that the, um, the solvent migration is actually not at the top, which um, as a general rule is never the case. So is almost never the case. So I would say 
Um, this bottom one would be false. I'm just thinking through these uh, right with you guys. I'm not really sure what the right answer is. Uh, I'm just trying to use my own critical thinking skills. The results will be the same if the time is held constant. Um, I think the results would be the same if you're using the same solvent, but the results will be different if the solvent is different because it has to do, um, because how it migrates um, based on previous slides, how that um, ink migrates or those pigments migrate depend on how they bond with that solvent. The relative position of the bands will be different. Um, I think that's probably a true statement. Um, and then the distances traveled by each pigment will be different, but the RF values will remain the same. Well, if the distances traveled are different, then the RF values will not be the same. So I think we will go with this one. And then what is the RF value for carotene calculated from the chromatogram below? Um, the RF value for uh, carotene would be 11.5 divided by 12. So if you do the math for that real quick. So let me go ahead and just um, mark all these down. Those would be like the answers I think would be correct, but I'm going to go ahead and mark them wrong because I want to see if we can actually repeat this just in case. So we can see that, all right, all of these were wrong. Now I want to go out. Now you can print the results, but I don't, I don't like these results actually. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this. Now this answer stays. So you'll just have to copy and paste, um, I'm sorry, you'll have to copy and paste this screen into a Word doc. So I'll go ahead and uh, control C, open up a Word doc. Don't need that. No, that's a different one, sorry guys. Um, new blank document. Uh, so I'll do just so it's a little bit smaller. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. And then we'll go to. We're about to finish up on time here, and you can see that you can reattempt as well. Um, so then we'll go to this second part, and then you'll want to be walking through the second part um, and answering the questions. Do the analysis and the lab quiz for this one as well. Um, do the best you can, and um, based on how the submissions look, I'll um, maybe take some time next week to look over this lab um, and talk about the finer points. Um, so uh, I appreciate you uh, working um, independently on this lab, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, and peace out.